Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you for joining today's live stream. It's Thursday, it's the 15th day of November here in Honolulu, Hawaii, where I'm joining you live. And today we're going to be focusing on Tao wisdom and how to shorten the road back home. What does that mean, how to shorten the road back home? Well, you know, we came here for a reason, and most of us are having a reasonably good time but sometimes this road of life can be very difficult and there is a purpose and a reason behind it we'll be talking a little bit about that today and how to make that path less daunting a lot shorter and a bit more fun so i encourage you to stick around if you can uh, today's live stream uh, will be posted on groups and so you may or may not be able to stick around so you can Come to my Facebook page and like and subscribe. Uh, and this will give you an opportunity to watch the recording again, as well as know when I go live. So thank you so much for joining me today. There, that's a little bit better of a view. So thank you, everyone. <clears throat> so um, I was watching my teacher, my teacher's Master Shah. He does, has been doing some live streams lately uh, as he has come out of his a deep meditation cycle for several months and uh, he's been offering some complimentary wisdom and blessings to humanity I do encourage you to go to his Facebook page Dr. and Master Shah and watch some of his live streams uh, on love meditations he's uh, quite an astounding soul and truly a beautiful being one that can help serve humanity in a beautiful way so a lot of what I share is uh, his wisdom and I just put my own uh, angle on it so that uh, for some people it's easier to understand and so thank you for coming and thank you also for hitting the share button to let other people know about this let me check in with who's joined us so far today welcome Hashad Hashalada I can't quite pronounce your name welcome Heather Aloha Rena saying I got to meet Rena just recently her and her daughter came to visit in Hawaii and they uh, they are from India welcome Sharon welcome also Christina Kristen Rojas thank you Kristen you might keep an eye on her posts she's my assistant and she posts anything that's important links things like that Aloha Johnny welcome Aloha Natasha welcome also Deborah Anderson and Aloha Dan welcome Kathy Arnold so um, we'll wait a few minutes as more people will gather before I go deeper into this topic. One of the things I want to share with you is that uh, Tao wisdom is very far and very wide. Um, and actually, I'm not allowed to talk about certain aspects of it because you have to be an authorized teacher to talk about certain aspects of it. Uh, Tao uh, is a word, and it means the source, source wisdom. And there is something called the Tao Chong, the Tao field, Tao love there's a lot of different words but I don't want people to be confused confuse that with Taoism very very different Taoism is a religion uh, whereas uh, Tao is simply a reference to source wisdom that uh, has no attachment to you agreeing or not agreeing because that's how source is there's no attachments there's just that which resonates with us or that which does not resonate with us so today is on the Tao wisdom on how to shorten the road back home. And in, in deciding what to teach about uh, in today's live stream, I was, sometimes I'm inspired by images. And I was going through some of my images and I saw this one that I posted last night of a, of a child walking up a spiral staircase into the heavenly clouds. I said, oh, what a beautiful picture. Obviously this child is returning. Uh, or wants to see what's up there and so let's ask Kevin what kind of subject matter can I talk about today and this is what came up so I'll be sharing some insights with you on that now a lot of people uh, in this life experience go through some significant uh, blockages one could say or suffering another could say there are you know our beloved Jesus look at the amount of suffering that, that he went through uh, bringing the truth to humanity, bringing the truth he had to give his life. 
uh, there are many great beings in bringing the truth have to give their life they go they are just scorned um, there is so much um, in the world today where good people are just thrown under the bus and trampled uh, because they tell the truth and so when we look at how to get home the shortest path sometimes uh, it requires us to go against whatever we've been taught now I gotta be careful with those words because I certainly don't want you to change something that makes you happy but sometimes what we're taught is actually not accurate sometimes what we're taught is what has been taught to the person that taught us and somebody that taught them and so forth so it's simply a message that has been repeated over and over and over therefore it must be right right not always the case it is much wiser and much better to follow our heart when we follow our heart our heart is connected to the soul it's when we follow our mind that we make the biggest mistakes <laughs> following our heart is of the greatest and most importance because it allows us to be attuned to the source, to the Tao, to the higher wisdoms. We might receive information, mind-based information, about um, what we should or should not do based on a certain belief system. You know, there's, there's a belief system out there uh, where you're not allowed to drink coffee. Wow, okay. There's other ones out there that says you're not allowed to do this, you're not allowed to do that. And they all have their reasoning for it. Um, some of the highest doctrines in the in the uh, Western cultures uh, the the ministers are not allowed to have um, any sex they're just they're not and you know how how anti-human is that I mean it's simply a normal part of being a human being and it creates problems because the purity of the individuals is, is very rarely such that they can withstand such a, a, a very difficult task and so I'm going someplace with this and the point is that sometimes what we're taught is not always what's best for us when we follow our heart then we can often uh, shorten our path so one of the things that Master Shah shares is that Dao Fa Ziran you know follow nature's way that's what that means Dao Fa Ziran follow nature's way when we follow nature's way we are following our heart very very important so I'm starting to get into the wisdom so I'm gonna pause a moment acknowledge the other folks that have joined us and we're gonna invite in all the beings of light and we'll move forward so welcome Dan welcome also to Dean Aloha Jim welcome Kathy Arnold uh, welcome Jenny Dan Danielle welcome Marguerite Aloha to uh, Jill McGrath and welcome Crystal Dawn Thank you all for coming. Thank you for clicking on the share button. Other thing other people know about today's live streams. So I'm going to place my hands in soul light, soul service, hand position. We'll call forth all the beings of light. And we'll ask them to come at this time to offer their unconditional wisdom and blessings as well. So dear our beloved divine creator, the Tao, the source, by whatever name you come, all the beings of light underneath, including the angels, healing angels, archangels, saints, masters, ascended masters, lamas, sifus, gurus, buddhas and bodhisattvas, beloved Jesus and Mother Mary, all the beings of light, all the uh, Ganesha and the Muhammad and, and, and all those mentioned and unmentioned serving the planet of the light side. We love you, honor you, respect you. We invite you to please come at this time. Dear the soul, of our own soul, our own heavens team, guides, angels, and saints. We love you, honor you, appreciate you. We invite you to please be present at this time. As we share this wisdom and this teaching on the Tao, shortening the pathway, please borrow my mouth, allow me to offer whatever wisdom needs to come through to serve the most. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We ask the source, soul song of love, peace, and harmony to connect us heart to heart, soul to soul, as we uh, chant the song of love peace and harmony one round for anyone new that will watch this in a group love peace and harmony is a mantra uh, it can be found at lovepeaceharmony.org it is chanted in 42 languages around the world in six continents and it is a healing mantra so I encourage you to learn more about it so let us chant one round together and then we will move forward into today's wisdom and teachings Lula, Lula, 
lu la lu la la li lu la lu la li lu la lu la li lu la lu la li lu la wo ai wo xin har ling wo ai zan nan li ang li rong Her mother sang, sang I ping on a sea, sang I ping on a sea. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and heart. <coughs> Excuse me. Money, love, peace, and harmony. How, how, how? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Give me just a moment. No, I'm not sick. I am perfectly healthy. That was an allergy reaction out of nowhere, but hey, at least I had my ability to mute the microphone and not blow my nose in your ear. So welcome everybody. Thank you for coming. Welcome also to Natasha and uh, Stan. Natasha, the mantra is called Love, Peace and Harmony and just above your question is the answer where you can download it complimentary. There is no uh, copyright on the song. And if you are tech savvy, you can go to the Play Stores or the Apple Stores and download the app called Love, Peace, Harmony. Okay. So thank you all for coming. Thank you for clicking on the share button. Today, Tao Wisdom on how to shorten the path. What path? The path of our soul's journey. First and foremost, we are a soul. We are not. Uh, Bob, Mary, Natasha, Kristen, uh, Ilona, welcome Ilona. We are not our name. We are not our personality. We are not our ego. This name, Master Paul, it's just a, a moniker. It's just something that says I've learned a little bit more on a specific subject matter than another. There are master mechanics. There are uh, master engineers. You know, there's it doesn't mean that that person is great it just means they are very knowledgeable in a specific subject matter so uh, that's all it means it has nothing to do with anything else but we live this life like it is um, it is the everything the end the all and the only and that is where the beginning of shortening the path is in order to shorten our path to return to the source or to return to the Tao, return to God, whatever verbiage you want to use, okay? Don't, uh, don't square your head, as my teacher would say. In order to return to the source, we have to start by recognizing that um, there's probably more than one round of doing this. Now, that might make one or two people just turn this off right away. Oh, there's, this is the only round, that's it. We're, we're done after this one life, okay? And then you are very attached to this life and your ego and you know you really need to do the best you can because if it's the only one you really need to uh, to do a lot more to make it a lot happier this wisdom can still serve you well because there's ways in which we can expedite our happiness process ways in which we can um, align ourselves to the greatest results and that includes the acknowledgement of our soul now, there is literally entire chapters written on this in, in Master Shah's book, uh, many of his books actually. But if you go to the book on the power of soul, <clears throat> he speaks at length on the nature, power, and significance of the soul. Uh, you might be surprised to know that the soul has a personality, that it has characteristics, it has likes, it has dislikes, it has an extraordinary memory extraordinary memory it remembers everything it remembers when you were a woman when you were a man it remembers people you could walk into a room and 30 people and something about that one person you just don't like where does that come from you never met them your soul remembers your soul remembers that that one person might have harmed you in a previous time 
That doesn't mean that they're a bad person now. They're, they're completely oblivious to it. Soul remembers. So soul is where the starting point is of shortening our path back home. When we can acknowledge the soul first, when we can make all of our choices with the acknowledgement of soul, when we make, uh, when we include our soul in our thought processes, when we include our soul in our prayers, when we include our soul in our requests for things to come forward in our future, when we include our soul to uh, support us um, in positive ways and to get us out of trouble. Um, it's very, very important. One of the singular highest wisdoms that has ever come to humanity was delivered to humanity on um, August 8, 2003. <clears throat> and on that day, it was announced uh, that the soul light era has returned returned keyword returned to humanity well who, who announced it how, how do we know about this well that's one of those things you're just gonna have to work with at face value uh, but uh, master Shaw has been communicating with very high-level beings in heaven forever one needs to only look at the the mountain of miracles that have occurred at the end of his hand and through his love for humanity to know that he's very well connected in heaven and on August 3rd, 2003, August 8, 2003, the soul light era was uh, turned on, so to speak, or brought back to humanity. What is the soul light era? <laughs> the soul light era is an era in which we return to the acknowledgement, the understanding, and the application in our every moment of life of soul. Okay, well, that's kind of curious. What does that mean? Apply soul. That means that we work with the understanding that everyone and everything has a soul and that, that the communication can occur on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. Not verbal communication. That's what we're used to human-to-human. -to -human. We're now talking soul-to-soul. -soul. Very, very different. And so in order to uh, move our entire consciousness to the soul light era, towards something that has been here before that we are returning to, we need to acknowledge that there's a purpose of every soul. Okay, well, what's the purpose? Many of you have heard this before. But let's go deeper today, shall we? Because we're trying to shorten our road back home, make it much more enjoyable. How do we do that? The soul has a consciousness. The soul was created by the source. The soul, not your soul, the soul. Well, what's the difference? Well, I have a soul, you have a soul. This teacup, what's it made up of? Energy and matter. Does energy and matter have a soul? Some will argue yes, some will argue no. The soul light era wisdom would say yes. How does it justify that, that a teacup could have a soul? The soul light era wisdom says that everything, everything, everything is from creator. All energy, all matter. What is called uh, dark energy, um, dark matter, scientific realms. 95% of everything is dark matter. They don't know what to call it. They don't know what they're looking at, right? They're looking at it through a telescope. They're looking at it through a microscope. They are clueless as to what it is. They just know that 95% of everything is dark matter. It's just energy and matter floating around. Well, what is that? That is creator, guys. It's everything is creator. That which is manifest is creator. That which is unmanifest is creator. The soul light era acknowledges that everything, everything, everything is made up of energy and matter and that that energy and matter is of creator well since that's pretty easy to to assimilate pretty easy to accept and digest then you just move to the next level of it which is that everything has the consciousness the love of creator in it therefore the energy and matter that makes up that teacup has the energy of love in it has the energy and consciousness of creator in it Therefore, everything has a soul. Now, this has been heard before by many of you who have watched. We're going to take it a lot deeper today. If you can work with the consciousness that everything has a soul, then you can start to shift every single aspect of your life. You can literally start to uh, make your problems dissolve 
literally overnight or in a much, 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 much shorter period of time. Well, why do we want to dissolve our problems? Aside from the obvious, our problems are there for a reason. Everything that enters our field of experience is not accidental. There's not a single thing that enters our field of experience that is accidental. It is all part of this much larger connectivity. And the reason we are so far from that acknowledgement on a 100% moment-to-moment basis is because we're lost in the woods. We're, we're walking in the trees and we can't see beyond what's right in front of us. The soul light era is designed to open the field of vision. If everything has a soul, then everything has the exact same purpose. What is their purpose? The one sentence secret of every soul is the purpose of every soul is to serve. Now let's think about that. Is this teacup serving me? What's it doing? Well, it's holding tea. It's holding five element tea, actually. Very nice. I'm going to take my first sip right now. It was a little bit hot earlier. And so the tea, the five element tea, has a soul. Each one of those five elements, earth, wood, metal, water, fire, are helping to balance my energies. So their souls are helping balancing my energies. Thank you to the soul of the five element tea. Thank you to the soul of the cup for holding the tea. What did I just do? I just gave love and acknowledgement to something that is inanimate to most people's perspectives, to something that is offering unconditional service to me, but in my entire life until just now have never acknowledged it. Everything, everything, everything is offering unconditional service to us. Why? How do I, how can I say that so clearly? Because God offers its unconditional service to us. Creator, source, Tao is constantly offering unconditional service 100% of the time. There is not a single thing in source creation that is not offering its service to us. <laughs> What's happening is our perspective of what is coming to us is not allowing us to see that truth. That is a truth. It is an immutable, undeniable truth. If you understand the nature of the Solite era, if you understand the nature of our Creator, <clears throat> Source Creator gives to us whatever we want. Source Creator has laws, the universal law of universal service. Give to others unconditionally you receive unconditionally do a little good receive a little do good do a little bit more good receive a little bit more good do unconditional service receive unlimited benefits that's one half of the universal law of universal service the other half do a little unpleasant service hermit hurting harming cheating lying receive a little lesson do a little more unpleasant service receive a little bigger lessons do unlimited bad things receive huge lessons what are lessons health issues suffering financial issues suffering relationship issues suffering right in order to shorten the pathway we have to remove the suffering then everything is yay hunky dory happy happy but how do we get to happy happy when we're suffering suffering we must remove the suffering by acknowledging the source the source is our soul journey so we're back to the beginning Everything, everything, everything has a soul, including you. This is not your first time around. Your soul is the carrier of all of your experiences. In order to shorten the path, we must acknowledge that the experiences that are in front of us are bringing us beautiful and wonderful experiences, beautiful and wonderful good things, and not so beautiful, not so wonderful things. The not so wonderful things are ours. We must own them. But they are souls. Hmm. Wait a minute. So when that person hit me in that car accident and I now have back pain for the last 20 years, that was a good thing? They were trying to serve me? Hmm. Wait a minute. You mean when I got fired, they were trying to serve me? Hmm. Wait a minute. You mean when that person was gossiping about me, that they were serving me? You have to change your perspective. In order to shorten the path, Every single thing that we judge as bad, every single thing that we love to have that is good, that enters our life, must be seen through new, higher Tao eyes. Through what is Tao? Tao is source, source wisdom. You must 
look at everything through a much higher set of eyes. What does that mean? What is the service of this thing that I am judging that has come to me? What is its service? What is it trying to bring to me? What is it trying to remind me of? How is it trying to serve me? That again is somewhat obvious. <laughs> Many of you have been watching these live streams for years. So you understand that uh, karma, the basic concept of karma, you understand that if you do bad things, you receive unpleasant things. You do good things, you receive good things. And yet we still get stuck in the drama of our lives, the good and the bad. How do we shorten that? drama how do we increase the good it starts with a moment to moment acknowledgement moment to moment acknowledgement that whatever is in front of you be it good or bad is a soul and it is trying to serve you i just said thank you to this five element tea and this teacup that's a moment to moment acknowledgement of the souls that are in front of me is that creating good karma? Yes. Did the soul of this five element T and the energy and matter and the cup, were they um, elevated by that acknowledgement? Yes. Not just because I have the name master in front of me. I'm no different than anybody else. I'm just a human that's, that's suffering and, and having good stuff happen to me just like anybody else. But these souls are on a trajectory as well. Every soul comes from energy and matter. Every soul goes through the process of awakening. We are in, let's say, level five of a 10 level process of awakening. This cup might be in level one of a 10 level process of awakening. We get to Jesus level. Jesus level might be level nine of a 10 level process of awakening. Everything, everything, everything is in a, in a level of its process of its soul experience. But when I offer my love and gratitude to this cup, what am I doing? To this tea, what am I doing? I am shortening my pathway back home. How? How is that possible? I'm just talking to a cup. I'm just talking to tea. I am giving love and acknowledgement to everything, at least in this moment, the tea received it. How does that help? Well, if everything is from source and this tea and this cup and the energy and matter receives love and gratitude, then that elevates its consciousness, that elevates its frequency, that assists it in its path, in its vibrational forward movement. Do you get it? Because it is one with me. This cup is one with you? Yeah, so is the tea, so is everything, so is the air. I give my greatest love to the air. This breath in has given me life. I give my greatest love to the air. I'm so grateful. Is the air made up of energy and matter? Yes. Does the air have a soul? Yes. The air has a soul. All the energy and the matter of the air. Countless souls. And they are on a trajectory, on a pathway. They might be at level one also. They might be very high. They are giving us life. What if air, what if water has a much higher uh, alignment to source than you and I? Interesting thought, huh? What if we're a five and air and water are actually a six because all they do is unconditionally give to us life. That's all they do, right? Air and water unconditionally give us life. We taint it, we kill it through our pollutions, but they give to us unconditionally. It's very likely air and water is on a higher soul trajectory than a human being. It's about changing your consciousness. The soul light era is about understanding on a much much higher level that everything 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 has a soul and that soul communication which is what in essence I'm doing when I say thank you is a much much higher future process <laughs> within 100 years everything will be on a soul communication trajectory people will be offering their love and their gratitude to everything, not just the people they love. People will be in a constant communication with all energy and all matter. Why do you think Jesus can walk on water? Why do you think there are stories of masters who can disappear and reappear in other places? 
what is a higher consciousness understanding of that? They have aligned their consciousness with the consciousness of the water. Jesus' consciousness and the water's consciousness were one. They were filled with the same highest energetic frequency of love. There was no separation of thought. Oneness consciousness. What is oneness consciousness? Nothing is different, higher, or lower. Everything is one. That is oneness consciousness. Jesus understood this at much more than a mind level, at a heart level, at a soul level. Therefore, the ability to walk on water was not something that even entered his mind as, as impossible. It was simply obvious because he is one with the water. What is being one with something? It is acknowledging that everything is from source creator. The water came from source creator, didn't it? It wants to serve, doesn't it? Jesus understood the basic understanding that water wanted to serve, so he simply made love to the water and walked right on top of it. It was happy to hold him up. Understand that oneness consciousness is soul understanding consciousness. Oneness consciousness is a recognition that everything is here to serve us, including all of the not so wonderful things that enter our lives. These not so wonderful things that enter our lives do not have to stay. How many of you have suffered because you were, you were um, assaulted as a child? Your your parents were mean or cruel, or you were at the other end of a car accident and it and it and it and it, and it harmed you. You know how many of you have held on to a grudge for who knows how long? How many of you are now married again and you're happy, but the previous spouse you just want to spit on them every day, right? What is this doing for your soul journey? Is it shortening your path or is it lengthening your path? Everything has a soul. You mean the spouse I want to spit on every day because they took my car, took my house, took the money, took the blah, 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 blah. You mean their soul is trying to serve me? How is that possible? Well, first of all, your monkey mind said that, not your soul. Remember, we have to go to the heart. We have to go to the soul level. If we're going to shorten our path on the way back home, we must see things from a much, much higher level. The level that the beings of light see things from. You know, you've heard before, how would Jesus look at this? How would Buddha look at this? How would God respond? They certainly wouldn't say, well, I don't really give a shit. He's an asshole. Blah, 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 blah. They wouldn't say that. <laughs> you think they would say that? No, they wouldn't. They would offer their love. How do they get to such a deep level of love? They would see these individuals that have done these done these things as beautiful souls it's possible if you believe in the law of karma that we have done those exact same things to them how much would that suck if that's the truth right what if that person that took your house took your car took your money caused you a car accident made you paralyzed whatever what if we did that to them first how did that make you feel how did they feel if you did that to them first we don't understand the full karma picture in most cases that's a possibility as well if it's not, if, 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 if they have been unpleasant to us, we have a choice. We can see them as souls. Do we want to stop their upward trajectory on their return back home by having revenge? Or do we want to love and truly let go? One of my students, they say, I love, I let go. I don't hold any grudge. But that's not true. Because I can hear it in their communication whenever it comes up. And so there's no grudge, but there is. That means that there has been no full release. In order to shorten our path back home, we must recognize that every soul is here to service, even those that harm us financially, even those that cause us to suffer emotionally. Okay, We have to look at what is their service it's a much higher perspective. What is their service to me? Obviously, there is something that has come to me that is here to serve me. What is that? Those that have that perspective will power through that suffering in one week, one month, one year. Be done with it and be very happy and will have moved forward and their trajectory into their future is on a much, much higher path than those who sit there and wallow in suffering. We have control over this. It requires consciousness.
So throughout our day, does your uh, you 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 go to bed at night, right? Why do we? Why why is the great teaching say offer your gratitude? Thank you, God. Thank you, Tao. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Buddha. Whoever you talk to, right? Thank you, Muhammad. Thank you, Krishna. Whoever you talk to, at night a lot of us uh, we 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 do our little prayers and say thank you. What else do you say thank you for? Did you say thank you to your house? What's it done for you? Has it protected you from the elements? Has it kept you from freezing, which you could die? Has it kept you from burning up, in which you could die? Did you say thank you to your house? Did you say thank you to your bed for supporting you in a good night rest? Soul consciousness is recognizing that all things are, are infused with creator. Soul consciousness is moving to a much higher uh, wisdom in which when you start thinking this way, you can really start shifting your whole world. Now, when I heard this uh, about um, 10 years ago from Master Shah at his Soul Enlightenment retreat, I was like, so you're telling me that everything has a soul? I mean, I was like scratching. So you're telling me that everything has a soul? Really? Yeah, I'm probably going through the same process some of you are. And he said, yeah, and, and that you can communicate with souls. You can ask their help. What? I can ask an inanimate object for help. Yes. I'm just curious. Okay. Car. A car is inanimate, right? A car doesn't have a soul, right? It does, but some of you may be saying, no, a car doesn't have a soul. Again, is car made from energy and matter? Is energy and matter made from source? If the answer is yes, then a car must have a consciousness, a source consciousness, a love built into it. It has a service. Is it serving us unconditionally? How many of you have names for your cars? I do. I give my car love. I, I turn on my Dow hands and give my car a blessing probably once a month. It runs great. When we start shifting our consciousness, communicating with everything, giving love to everything, especially that which we have never considered giving love to. Do you give love to the water that comes out of your faucet? Do you give love to the food and the water? Do you give love to the plants and the animals as you walk by and you hear the bird song? Do you give love back to the birds for their beautiful bird song? Do you give love to the air with the breath? It's hard to be conscious like that all the time. But if you can move slowly but surely towards that consciousness, then you can move to the next level of that, which is called soul communication. <laughs> uh, me and my wife, every day, well, four days a week, we have a farmer's market business. What do we do? Dear the soul of our booth, our food, our product, to the soul of all of those who have come to the farmers markets we love you and I appreciate you please forgive us if in this or any time we have ever harmed you we're so grateful for the opportunity to serve you please stop by our booth enjoy our samples enjoy our food please bless us financially and we will bless you with beautiful food that's a simple form of soul communication we have had success is it because of that possibly did all of those souls benefit from that communication? 100% yes. Another example. You're getting ready to go to work. Dear the soul of my beloved car, all of those that I'll be driving by, the soul of the freeways, the other vehicles that are out there, uh, the best, most efficient pathway to work. I love you. I send you my greatest love so that my drive is easy, smooth, trouble-free. I ask my angels and my heavens team, other souls, if they would assist on this easy drive to work. How do we shorten our road back home? I'm telling you, a hundred different examples so that you start thinking outside the box. Soul, soul, soul. How do we shorten our road back home? We start to recognize that everything is here to serve us, to remove our suffering that we have a innate consciousness and power within us to communicate to the innate consciousness within everything and it is more than happy to serve us 
more than happy. I cannot tell you how many times I needed to get to some place very expediently. It's, you know, it's 20 miles away. I have 20 minutes to get there. It's a traffic time. Dear all the souls of all those in this traffic, all the traffic lights, I need to get over here in the next 20 minutes. Can you please assist? Some people will hear that and they're, oh my God, this person is already crazy. I say it without even thinking about it because I know that those souls are here to serve. I know that those traffic lights will turn green much more efficiently as I'm coming upon them. I know that uh, the cars will move out of the way a little more often. Why? Because I'm sending them love. The car can feel love? No. But the energy and matter that makes up the car can. Everything is made up of energy and matter. Therefore, everything has love or God consciousness, creator consciousness. That's what I am speaking to. So soul communication can assist you in so many ways. Your, uh, uh, you have an argument with your spouse, right? When I had arguments with my spouse before this one, the previous one, it would take three, four days. To dissolve things now 10 minutes why I just do soul communication we might have a spat dear my beloved wife I love you please forgive me for my ego response or my argument please forgive me for the need to be right uh, I want for you to be happy I want to be happy let us come back together and open our hearts to each other I send love am I talking to the person no I'm talking to their soul the souls get together oh they love each other oh they want to resolve this they whisper in each other's ears of the ego personality you know your husband your wife whatever they might have very strong ego personality you know they always stick to their guns right it's hard for them to say I'm sorry <laughs> talk to their soul you'd be shocked at the results you think your soul and their soul want to argue no of course not your souls are intelligent you guys need to stop this arguing because it's going to go round and round and round. You're going to have to do the next lifetime again. Give each other love. Solve your karma stuff. When you do soul communication, you solve these problems. Does that shorten your path back home? Absolutely. The kids are fighting with each other. Call their souls. Teach their souls about forgiveness. Teach their souls to love each other. Sing love, peace, and harmony to their souls. Watch what happens. Five minutes. Things could be resolved. Why? Because you're dealing with things at the level of origination. You're dealing with things at the level of consciousness. Are you starting to understand that we are in the soul light era? And the soul light era is about communicating, acknowledging, recognizing everything is made up of energy and matter every energy and matter has a soul every energy and matter that has a soul is trying to serve us therefore anything good is serving us obviously but anything that we judge as bad is also serving us when we remove our suffering we are on a much faster trajectory back home when we remove our suffering we can hear more clearly heaven's guidance our soul's guidance how do we remove our suffering? We come at it from the level of soul. We come at it with forgiveness. We come at it with love. We come at it with a consciousness. How is the soul trying to serve me? Okay? So we're going to do a quick forgiveness practice and acknowledgement of this so that we can further align ourselves to our soul and to this deeper understanding. So let us connect. There's a hand position. It's like a prayer position. Left hand goes in front of the heart center. And this brings heaven's energies into our heart center. You can just leave your hand in prayer position, whatever is comfortable for you. Close your eyes. All of the outer souls are with us. We've already invited Jesus and Buddha and Mother Mary and God and all the angels. They're already here. They are unconditionally serving us. Did you say thank you to them? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let us connect to our soul. And let us ask it to continue to serve us and guide us. So if it is comfortable, please repeat after me. Dear my beloved soul, dear the soul of all of the energy and matter that makes up my physical body. 
the soul of my bones, my heart, my lungs, the soul of all the energy and matter in my brain. How many cells are in the brain, right? All of them are trying to serve you. Do the soul of all my muscles that allow me to walk, the soul of my lungs that allow me to breathe, the soul of my intestines that allow me to convert food into energy, water into nourishment. I love you all. Deeply, deeply appreciate you all. Give your love to your lungs. Thank you for allowing me to breathe. I could literally die within four or five minutes without you. Please forgive me for not honoring you and being so grateful for your service to me. To the soul of my brain, without you I could not think. I could not comprehend this wisdom that is being shared. Without you I cannot pay the bills, get back and forth to work. Without you, I cannot even move. You handle so many functions in my body automatically. Please forgive me for not sending you love and gratitude. Please forgive me for not supporting you in your function. I'm so grateful. Remember what I taught you earlier. When we give love and gratitude to these seemingly uh, uh, small things that you might not have recognized ever before we are assisting them in their conscious evolution because they are all part of the original source creator our assistance to them brings more light to our body our love to them brings more light to our body all of this increases your pathway back to heaven let us continue dear the soul of my muscles I love you Without you, I could not, literally could not lift myself out of bed in the morning. I could not walk from the room to the kitchen or to the bathroom. Without you, I could not, literally, I could not go to the bathroom without you. I could not do anything without you, my beloved muscles. Please forgive me for not acknowledging you and your unconditional service. Dear the soul of my heart, I love you. You are the reason I am alive when somebody dies that is what they say the heart stopped without you I would not be alive please forgive me for not acknowledging your incredible service to my life I love you thank you for all that you do for me let's go outside of our body dear the soul of my company that I work for my job could be your own business to the soul of all the people that I work with the employees my boss my boss's boss I'm very grateful to you without you I would not have financial blessings to pay for my house to pay for my children's education to pay for the food that's in my refrigerator please forgive me for complaining I recognize now that everything has a soul that you are providing me a service of financial blessings and I have complained tremendously possibly causing more problems at work than need to be there I will start to shift my consciousness please forgive me my lack of understanding I am very grateful to my bosses my job and to the company for providing this financial flourishing to me you understand what we're doing now we're shifting our awarenesses uh, dear the soul of my home dear the soul of all of the all the appliances in my home all the, the TV the pictures on the walls everything I am so grateful to you you give me comfort relaxation the ability to rejuvenate regenerate the ability to not freeze because you cover me and protect me or not become too hot because you provide a safe space for me please forgive me my complaining about you dear the soul of my car I love you you have driven me unconditionally wherever I want to go and I rarely acknowledge you I complain when you break down and I don't give you love please forgive me for not acknowledging you everything has energy and matter everything has source consciousness everything is trying to serve us it has a soul continue to give it love dear God dear the source dear all of my 
heaven's teams, guides, angels, and saints, all the angels, dear Jesus, dear Mother Mary, dear Buddha, Muhammad, choose whoever you want. Let us send us our love. Thank you from my heart. You have very likely saved my life numerous times. You may have guided me to do something or not do something. And I was not aware that you were doing it. And it saved my life. Or maybe it saved my job. Maybe it saved me hundreds of thousands of dollars because you offered me guidance when I was unaware. You offer your love your wisdom and your guidance unconditionally asking nothing in return and I have not truly acknowledged you near as much as I should I am so grateful to all of you for your unconditional service to me I open my heart to you offer my deepest gratitude thank you thank you thank you dear the soul of every chair I've ever sat in in the classrooms in school when I was growing up the chair that I sit in now I love all of you you have supported me kept my back straight kept me comfortable allowed me to not be uncomfortable on the floor you have offered unconditional service to me and I have done nothing to even acknowledge you I give you my love and my gratitude Dear the soul of my mother and father, my children, my brothers and sisters, I love you. Please forgive me for all the complaining I have ever done when you yelled at me, judged me, criticized me. All the times you may have done something that caused me to be angry. I may have done these same things to you. I may be holding grudges against some of you. Please forgive me. I am starting to recognize that any place I have disagreement with you, my parents, you, my children, you, my brothers and sisters, that I may have created some of the blockages and that you are trying to provide a service to me as a soul. You are trying to assist me to wake up so that I can shorten my path back to the Tao back to the source your service to me is to assist me in asking forgiveness in offering forgiveness please forgive me for not seeing this more clearly I offer you my unconditional forgiveness for anything that you may have done to me and I ask your unconditional forgiveness for anything I may have done to you let us learn from this wisdom let us forgive each other and move forward in love peace and harmony and finally, let us love ourselves. Do we have a soul? Yes. Is our soul benefited when we put ourselves down? Is our soul journey lengthened or shortened when we say negative things to ourselves or about ourselves? Is our soul benefited when we think we are not enough, not pretty enough, not skinny enough, not long enough hair not tall enough not short enough when we give others power and authority over what we think about ourselves is that benefiting our soul journey no let us forgive ourselves dear my beloved soul dear every part of my soul my shen qi and jing i love you unconditionally please forgive me for accepting internal criticism and external criticism please forgive me for accepting all of this as truth when it was not true every part of me is beautiful and in service to the source every part of me is unjudgeable by myself or anyone else from now on, I ask my soul to guide me to remove and forgive all unpleasant thoughts about myself. I ask my soul to disallow me accepting anyone outside of me's negative energy or perspectives about me. Please bless me, my beloved soul, 
to release all these and bring my journey back to source much faster thank you thank you thank you so these are probably 1,000 examples of different forms of soul communication all of them for the singular purpose you can come out of your meditation now all of them for the singular purpose of showing you how by recognizing that everything 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 is trying to service and that we are not being in near enough gratitude to all of the different ways and all of the different things that things are trying to serve us that when we show gratitude communicate with the souls in our heart and our mind that when something supposedly bad happens to us if we address it from the level of soul instantly how is this trying to serve me that we can remove the blockages in our life a million times faster thereby increasing our trajectory back to source much faster we can make our life much much happier by acknowledging all of the souls in every area of life around us when we give our love our gratitude to everything especially that which we have never acknowledged before everything inanimate food water air the chair the car everything 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 the more you give your love you are elevating the consciousness of that which you are giving love to those souls that receive your love and gratitude shower it back upon you that is called virtue that virtue elevates your soul helps you move faster on your trajectory back home also by giving your love and gratitude to everything all of those souls which have source consciousness are further elevated on their path they therefore move forward on their path too since we are all one that is a natural part of the oneness by giving your love to everything 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 this is the wisdom of how you can shorten your road back home incorporate the soul light era wisdom that has returned to humanity this is part of the core of that wisdom it's about applying it in our everyday life I wish to acknowledge beloved master Shah for bringing this wisdom to humanity for being the vessel through which this uh, solite era and the wisdom has entered our world you can assist your children and everyone close to you by showing them this love this gratitude this way of responding to things that might be judged as unpleasant or negative because people learn a lot more by our actions and how we react and respond than they do by our words these words just carry wisdom it's the it's the actuality of it that will actually create the greatest service so that's my encouragement I thank Master Shah let us offer our gratitude one final time we thank you the divine the Tao and the source we thank you our beloved creator we thank you Master Shah we thank you all the beings of light who have come to offer their service here today we thank our own soul our heavens team guides angels and saints we thank all of the Shen Shi Jing energy and matter of our soul heart mind and body for its unconditional service and I thank you so I love you love you love you important notice I will be going to see Master Shah very very soon I'll be leaving Monday so I will not be doing a live stream this Sunday for uh, supporting those with the condition of cancer for love peace and harmony for all of you that have been joining that please chant for them every day anyway okay ask the love peace harmony song to serve those with the condition of cancer um, uh, so I will not be doing live streams for several weeks I'll return on the uh, the fifth or sixth so probably uh, Thursday morning maybe I'll be doing a live stream it depends on how much I recover from the flights and all that okay I'll post it if I am doing a live stream on Thursday December 6th or 7th whatever that is okay so um, for those that are my students that I do classes with uh, the classes will continue so don't worry about that so love you love you love you thank you thank you thank you uh, if you came in late make sure you watch this one this is a uh, Filled with lots of good wisdom that can serve your entire future. Bye-bye, everybody. Mahalo.